Uh, we're hoping to get your insight on exactly what you think is driving this rise in commodity prices. Uh, is this something that's temporary, driven by speculation, or do you see something more structural here you know, about a shortage of supply potential? There is no doubt, uh, Alex, that there is, uh, we're seeing a higher demand. If you look at the IA report, uh, uh, we are for the third quarter, you're looking at close to 97 million barrels. By year end, we are looking at something around close to 99 million barrels. If you look at the forecast from IA for the fourth quarter next year, is a little bit over 100 million barrels. So there is higher demand uh, that we are seeing. Of course, uh, with the higher demand, uh, we are seeing certain uh, short to midterm issues that popped up, like the energy, uh, the power, uh, electricity uh, cost in, in, in the UK and uh, in Europe in general, and the shortage of gas and of course, that had certain impacts on what is happening now. There is some shifts that we have seen from gas to liquids, especially in certain markets in Asia, that impact oil demand by an additional almost half a million barrels shifting from gas to oil. And not to mention, we are seeing uh, the surplus inventories are behind us right now down more than 10% from the five-year average. So overall, the demand is, is very healthy, and that's what we are seeing. Well, so I, I want to kind of step back on the bigger picture here, because earlier this year, we saw the IEA uh, put out their net zero report, which said basically no new oil and gas fields beyond those already sanctioned, they're going to be required under its net zero scenario. Now, they, they made it clear it, it's a scenario. So what was your reaction to that report? What did you think when that came out? Uh, I think the IEA report presented three scenarios uh, with oil demand in 2050 ranging between 104 and 24 million barrels. It's a big range. Uh, 80 million barrels range. Uh, but the focus was mostly on the lower demand case, which is not a realistic picture of the future. The report seems also to reflect one sided regional uh, perspective. Uh, and is unfortunately applied to the entire world. For example, uh, Europe is moving aggressively with energy transition, but the EU uh, consume just a little bit above 10%. Uh, the assumption is that Europe uh, may be able to afford an expensive solution being proposed, which unfortunately uh, most of the developing world won't be able to uh, uh, cope up with additional cost for this energy transition. So affordability is a key priority, but as we see the recent event in Europe, affordability has also uh, become an issue even in Europe. So report of Asia being able to pay more for LNG shows how the global energy markets are interconnected and cannot be separated or isolated. Basically what we are talking about is an orderly transition while we are deploying new energy sources rather than not doing any investment on uh, conventional energy sources. I hope we don't wake up one day with a crisis on our hand because we did not develop the right uh, resources, adequate supplies to meet uh, the world demand. 